Hey everyone, this is Bailey Wiki, and we're inside the new modular crypt system with the latest release. It's uh, interactive, it comes with a bunch of large and small scenes already built that you can customize. But if you've built scenes in Foundry, you know that manipulating entities like walls and tiles and things in a scene, especially after you've placed them, can be a little bit challenging. Thanks to a new module, we can now make mass edits to anything and everything in a scene that we want, even very specific edits with a scalpel, including settings introduced by third-party modules like levels or active tiles. But that's not it. We can also copy entity settings and save those settings. We can randomize them and we can even share them with others. So not sure what I'm talking about? Well, you probably should. Let's jump into this tutorial for what I consider one of the most important new modules in your GM arsenal, and that's mass edit by ADIF. So let's start with a really common example. We decide after we've placed all the walls that we want to change just one attribute about them. We want them to not block sound. Now, if I use the standard foundry method of doing that, and I change that to not block sound and I hit save, it'll change all of my walls to do that, but it'll change them all into the same wall. My doors will become walls, my hidden doors will become walls, and I don't want that. So instead, I want to use mass edit and its shift edit function. So if you hold shift E, um, then it'll open up this new screen. You can see these little boxes opened up next to these attributes. Well, I can select the attribute that I want to change, just have that box selected, and then I can apply those changes and it'll apply all of those changes to all the walls without changing the nature of the wall. So you can see all of my secret doors and other types of walls are still intact. So that's just example number one about like why you just need this application, uh, this module, because it'll save you so much time when you go and want to change things. Now let's apply the same logic to lights. You know, I've got these lights in here, these torches, and I want to, uh, you know, I want to change them a little bit. I want to make them a little bit more dramatic a little bit more intense. So I'm going to increase the color. I'm going to go to the advanced tab and I'm going to increase things like contrast and saturation, increase the shadows until I get something that I like. Right. And I, and I, I say, Oh, this is great, but all the rest of my torches have the old uh, method. So I'm going to hit shift C and it's going to open up this dialog. I'm going to select all the attributes that I want to copy and just those attributes. Notice I can even select tags from Tagger and other third-party modules. That's a huge part of the power of the system is mass edit can also read and manipulate fields from other modules. And then I just hit shift V and it'll copy that new torch type to my next one. I can do the same thing with all my torches. I can hit control A and select every torch in the scene and hit shift V and it'll copy it over. So really right out of the gates, some really powerful functionality that I think really should be part of core foundry. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got mass edit and it's free to help us do that. So this also works with tokens. It works with journal entries. It works with drawings. It really works on all types of entities within your scene, which is what makes it so powerful. Imagine though, that you then use this to not only, you know, fix some of the normal entities, but maybe you want to use and copy, you created a certain occlusion method with better roofs, or you've created a certain active tile method with monks after active tiles. You can use this with those as well, and you can replicate and repeat and reuse work that you've already done. So I'm going to show you some of the more advanced methods of using mass edit, because I think you guys are really going to love this. So before I get going, just welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before on the Bailey Wiki channel, we teach everyday GMs how to create really great experiences for your players, whether it's through technology or art or a mix of the both. This is the channel where you come to, to learn tutorials, primarily around the Foundry VTT system, but also Dungeon Draft. And we'll dip into other things as well in the, in the VTT world, whenever we feel like it, because we're really GMs ourselves and we want to help you 
really create those kinds of experiences. All, all of the artwork that you see in our videos for the most part is available through my Patreon. It's also a, a way to support the channel. Um, for three bucks a month, you can support the content that we do if you like what we do. So I uh, would love if you subscribe to this channel, if you like and, and comment on things, really helps a lot. But if you really want to support us, any kind of uh, subscription on the Patreon help. And of course, for just a few bucks a month, you can get all of our content that you see in our videos as well. So with that, thanks for joining us and hopefully you enjoy the tutorial. So if, if you don't realize that this scene and many scenes and uh, assets that we create are modular. So this scene is a bunch of tiles and pieces that I link together to design this particular map. You can come in here and make changes or design your own maps from scratch with the prefabs and whatnot. Okay, so let's take a look at this lid. This lid is is smart. I, I spent some time giving it some Monk's Active Tiles automation, where if a GM double clicks on it, then it'll remove the lid and play a grinding noise for players. The interiors themselves are also customizable, so it might be a treasure or just a coffin, it might be empty, it might be a ladder leading somewhere, which that third crypt over is what that is. Um, but I'll just show you how it works here. Double click it, reveal the interior. So I like that effect, but I don't want to do that manually for the rest of the lids. So what I want to use is mass edit. So I select all of the tiles that I want to change. Or I'll just select the first one. I'll hit control C. And I'll select all the attributes that I want to make sure copy over. I'll override. I'll even select some that, that maybe default just to override something. And I'll select this that copies over all of my active tiles logic. I can't select individual active tile uh, actions, but if I hit shift V, then what I did was I just pasted all of those attributes into all of the other tiles. So with just a click of a button, I applied all of that logic. And now all of my crypts perform the same way. Now, the, another function is the find function. If you hit shift F, you can actually search for anything on the page that has a particular values that you want. In this case, I wanted to search for that particular tile artwork and it selected everything. If I hit shift E after that, then I can just mass edit all of those things to a different piece of artwork. Just like that. Shift F also has a find and edit. All that means is that it looks for that particular value first and it automatically opens up the edit dialog afterwards. This is all initiated with the shift key and you can change those in your, in your key bindings. Okay. Now let's take a look at how to make, how to replicate a staircase. So I've built this smart staircase where if a player walks onto it and they stop within it, then it'll play some, some sounds of footsteps and then it will, uh, let's add the ability to teleport. All right, so I'm going to teleport the player that walks into it and I'm just going to set just kind of a random sort of default location. That'll be the one variable I change and I want them to snap to grid when they get there. So I go ahead and apply this and now I can test out my staircase and the staircase is just a tile. That's how I was able to apply this, this logic to it. And if I have my player walk onto it, it automatically teleported them back to that point in space that it wanted them to go. And I hear my footsteps falling. So this teleporter is now working, but I don't want to go through all of those steps. I mean, I, I can make some really complicated teleporters, but here's another one. Again, it's just a tile that I can stretch around, put where I want to. And this is just an asset in my, in my crypt release. And I can say, okay, I want to copy everything that I did, or at least the, the components that are relevant, the active tiles components. I want to copy those from this staircase. And I feel good about that. I'm going to go up to the next one and I'm going to sh hit shift V. That's going to paste all of that information in here. So now I've got the same exact uh, flags set on my new one. Of course, I have to change the destination. So I'm going to just go change one piece. That's change the destination. Let's say I want to link these two. This wouldn't make sense to link these two in a real map, but I'll just link these two for demonstration purposes. And so now that top staircase links to this one, and then I'm going to do the reverse. I'm just going to link this staircase to the one up top. And now these two staircases should teleport my players between them. So let's test it out. Now 
Yeah, it works. You can hear some more ambient noise. By the way, Michael Gelfi is the, the, the general crypt noise that you hear. I've got some of that amazing audio in this particular release. But now, so I've got that. So let's look at a couple more use cases. It even works in things like 3D. So this is 3D Canvas by Ripper. This particular scene is one that I designed that has a bunch of these lights that are under lighting all of these cracks. And it's probably like a dozen lights. And like, I would not want it. Let's say I want to switch this whole scene to green. I'd have to go through and find those lights manually and change them. Instead, I can hit Control A and, uh, and then hit Shift E. And that brings up this edit dialog. And then I'll change all of the lights to this particular green color. And I'm going to grab that green color because I'm going to apply it in some other places. And I just hit save and boom, all of my lights are now green. Now there's a few more places that I want to apply that tint. Uh, first of all, there's a couple of tiles. Um, they end up rendering as 3D, but there's, they're really just tiles. If I hit control A and then shift E, I can apply the same tint to those tiles. That's not going to make quite as dramatic effect because the lighting of the scene is what really makes those tiles lit in the same way. So we'll let everything update and then we'll go into the scene config and uh, go to 3D canvas tab, advanced settings, and down below we'll find the tint for the scene. We'll hit control V to paste our hex code in there and we'll save it. And you can see it transitions to green. And just as like magic, I now have a green uh, crack scene. All right, so let's look at some more things here. You can also use it on tokens, which we talked about before. But in this case, I have all my skeletons in the crypt, and I don't like that they're all uniform. So I'm going to use, uh, well, first I'll just show you here. We can just change everybody to red, right? And that's already, maybe that's already good enough. But there's a Patreon feature that's a randomization feature. And I love it. Um, you do, I'll, I'll link to ADIF's Patreon afterwards if you'd like to use some of this advanced functionality. But what we're, we're going to do is we're going to randomize this. So I've got everybody selected. I hit Shift E. And then I'm going to pick some attributes to randomize. And I'm going to use those little dice icons there. In this case, I want to give them some random names. I'm just going to use the orc names, which is a uh, generatable list. I generate some names to see what they're going to look like. And then uh, let's see, I also want to randomize their rotation. So I think I can set zero to zero. I actually probably want to set zero to 359 degrees. The step size just, it tells the randomizer what to increment so it'll only go from one to two degrees not 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2 no, 1 .2 degrees type of thing um, i don't want to randomize that lock box so i won't select that and let's see what else oh maybe i want to apply a tag to everyone or i want to make them all neutral uh, let's see my image path so if i had a folder with multiple images of skeletons i can actually just pick that folder and randomize from that folder um, but I don't in this case. So, and then rather than adjusting dimensions, I want to adjust scale. So I'll open that up and I'll drop my min and max just a little bit so I can make my skeletons, uh, you know, come in different sizes. Right. And then maybe I want to mirror the image, uh, vertically and not horizontally or maybe vice versa. And then the tint color, like the color I can even randomize. So I'll, I'll open that up. Not quite sure how all the logic works here, but I tend to like pick a range that I want to operate in, like from green to like say red. And hopefully it'll pick some random colors in there. And you know what? I, I want these to auto rotate and I just don't want to change them one by one. So that's just convenient. I'm not randomizing that. I'm just selecting it. And then I'll hit apply changes. And there you go. It just gave me a bunch of different skeletons. And again, I think if I had picked zero to three fifty nine or something, it would have changed their rotations a little bit more. So uh, one more thing I want to show you is you can you can actually randomize their location. So if I go to location and I randomize that, um, so I'll pick that little crosshairs. I'll select a rectangled area. And then I want them all to snap to grid. So I'll pick that snap to grid option. And then if I hit randomize and then apply, it will change all of their locations. It'll pick random locations for each one of them.
And if I hit shift V, because I just use the shift C function, shift V will just keep randomizing them until I'm happy with their locations. Of course, you could stretch this across the whole map and have a bunch of randomness. But you can imagine using this also for tiles. If you have tree or bushes or rocks that you want to randomize, this would be a great function for that as well. Now I want to show you another really cool tool. This is part of the free components here. And I am selecting all the things that I like about my staircase, my smart staircase, if you will. And then I'm going to hit this presets button. And I'm actually going to assign these as a preset. And I'm going to name this the staircase, you know, Bailiwicky stair teleporter. Uh, maybe call it in scene, right? So maybe this is one that I use within scenes versus between scenes. And now I've got a preset and I can use that preset anytime I want in any map I want. That's extremely, extremely powerful, right? So I grab my staircase and I want this one to be just like it. And, um, and I've just got my presets already made. So if I hit shift edit, go to my presets button at the top and I can just apply that preset. And it will then apply all of that, those settings to my tile and I'm good to go. So that's extremely powerful. If I want to make presets for lights, torches, uh, traps, you know, um, all sorts of things. I have torches that I only want to turn on when it's dark, uh, you know, beyond a certain point. So I can just apply those presets anytime I want. I may want certain dramatic lighting effects. I may want certain uh, lighting effects in 3D canvas, like some particle effects that can be really complicated to create. But once you get them, they're amazing, but you don't want to redo it. So I can just have presets for all kinds of things. My overhead tiles. I mean, you name it. Uh, I can I can do the work once, I can invest the time once, and then have all of these things uh, retrievable later. Now, a Patreon benefit here is the ability to share these things. So I can export and import presets. That's where these buttons come from. And if, and I'll just kind of show you how these work, right? But essentially, if I want to share the work that I do, I can. And um, I'll probably make a Discord channel on my Discord for people to share their presets. So if you do happen to... Um, subscribe to ADIF and you want to come use that channel. It'll just be a place where anybody can swap presets if they'd like to. And so uh, just to kind of demonstrate how it works, I'm going to hit the export button. I'm going to select the preset or presets that I want to export and then uh, go ahead and export those. It's going to prompt me to save a JSON file, I believe, to my hard drive. And we'll just uh, notice you can then import that file, right? So I would just pick that file. Let's just open it up really quick to see what's inside of it. So it's just a JSON file. You can see it gives the name, um, it, you know, this is for a tile. It gives the name of what the preset's called. And then it's just a bunch of, you know, Monk's active tile settings, right? That we know that we want to carry over. So that's just what it generates and then what it ends up um, porting between systems if you're sharing these things around. So I'll close that, but that's all the major functionality. You can see the, the core mass edit functions are just extremely important and helpful. Uh, this definitely is going to go into my, my top 10 list, if not my top three, because I find myself using mass edit in every single you know scene that I open up. Um, but the advanced functionality I think is really, really interesting, right? The ability to randomize things is really cool. Uh, but the ability to be able to share these things with each other. Um, I've seen some pretty amazing feats of engineering around monks active tiles um, you know there's some really complicated things that you can do with uh, levels and 3d and all of that stuff becomes much easier to share between ourselves to you know learn and increment and and um, get better together so i'm really impressed with adif and and what that developer has been able to uh, put together in a, in a relatively short time with all this so this is really for anybody who wants to reduce work, eliminate work. They want to reuse work that they've already done and really just all around a, a very, very helpful module. If you want more information, I'm going to link to the page for mass edit. 
That's where you can get information on how to install it. It's in the Foundry directory. And if you want to get the premium versions or you just want to support ADIF in some pretty incredible stuff, uh, there's more that you get with that Patreon than, than just the premium stuff of Mass Edit. But this is where you would go to get the premium version. You would just use the install link that you get once you subscribe to uh you know to install the the premium version of mass edit and get all those um, those extra sharing functions and randomization so with that thanks adif again for all the hard work thanks everybody else hope you learned something today and have fun making your maps